Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm gonna show you something interesting. I've built my own Trezor crypto hardware wallet. I'm gonna show you how I did it and uh, what obstacles I encountered. So this might be interesting uh, just from a hardware or technical point of view or it might even help you in the process if you would like to uh, make your own. For those of you who don't know, Trezor is a hardware wallet meant to store your precious uh, cryptocurrency in a safe way. You can buy the Trezor wallet for something over uh, $120 and there is also a newer version uh, Trezor Model T which is more expensive but uh, it comes with a bigger screen and more features. I first saw it on the EEV blog channel, they've got one and uh, did a teardown. But then I realized that the product is open source, so I wanted to try and build one myself. The first thing I did was to go to their GitHub and uh, grab the source files. I was surprised to see that they even offer you the design files for the enclosure, so you could 3D print that as well. I grabbed the Gerber files for the version 1.1, which was the latest from their source files, and without changing anything, I sent them to one of those cheap PCB fab houses in China. At the same time, I ordered the parts I needed. The microcontroller uh, was the most expensive part because I had to get it from Farnell. It was around $19, but everything else is very cheap because, well, there isn't much in this thing. The screen itself was uh, sourced from one of those uh, 0.96 inch OLED modules that you can order for uh, $2 from AliExpress. It took almost uh, 3 months to get the uh, PCBs, so imagine I started this project 3 months ago, but there was Christmas in between, there was the Chinese New Year, plus the usual delays from the uh, uh, National Postal Office here. So it took a long time to receive the PCBs, but once they uh, finally arrived, I was able to start the assembly. I didn't uh, get any video of me doing the assembly because the board really has some uh, 0402 passives and uh, it's hard to get in there uh, um, to solder those with magnification and it will have been even harder to shoot a video at the same time. Here is a close-up of the board. The soldering is not great, but if you try to do 0402 components by hand, you will see the results will not be great without some specialized micro-soldering tools. Nonetheless, the board was assembled okay in a sense that it uh, didn't have any shorts and uh, I was getting 3.3 uh, volts from the onboard regulator. I then continued with uh, setting up the development environment on uh, Ubuntu because we need to get some uh, firmware on the device to confirm it's working. Luckily there is uh, this page on uh, GitHub that gives uh, some instructions on how to set up the environment. From what I could understand the page is maintained by a guy who also built his own Trezor hardware a while ago. I started with a fresh install of Ubuntu 16.04 and those uh, instructions uh, worked until a point where I was missing some dependencies uh, but if you install uh, all of these it should work and it should allow you to uh, complete the install without any other errors. Now continuing with the instructions I was able to compile the bootloader but while compiling the firmware I wasn't able to get past this uh, error I couldn't find any info on this particular error, so I was kind of stuck at this point. Luckily, Trezor also provides uh, pre-compiled firmware images, so I uh, grabbed one of their uh, pre-compiled images, combined it with the bootloader image as per the instructions, and I uh, successfully flashed the resulting image using my ST-Link V2 dongle. To my surprise the device came to life and it was showing this message on screen. It was uh, telling me to connect to their website while at the same time I heard this uh, new USB device trying to connect on Windows but it failed uh, with this error. It was USB device not recognized. 
At first I thought there might be something wrong in the hardware so I checked the board under magnification to see if there is anything wrong but everything was okay. The next thing I tried was pressing the two buttons while connecting the board to the computer because I read that would put it into bootloader mode and to my surprise it was detected and installed and now their website was telling me I need to upgrade my device firmware. I quickly followed the instructions, finished the upgrade, but immediately I was back to square one. I got the same error, USB device not recognized when connecting the device in normal mode. At this point I thought there must be something wrong in the firmware because uh, maybe I have a version of firmware that is new and it's not working with the hardware that I have. Uh, so I've tried different combinations of locally compiled bootloader versions plus firmware images obtained from uh, the uh, Trezor uh, website pre-compiled but the same result every time. During this process I also made the mistake that probably uh, locked me out of this microcontroller because while trying all these different versions I accidentally compiled and flashed a bootloader without specifying the uh, memory protect options to be off. So after flashing that bootloader I uh, locked my microcontroller preventing further writes to the flash memory and also I disabled uh, the JTAG interface in the process. This is of course a useful protection feature that Trezor enables for uh, compiling production unit firmware but during testing and debugging the phase that I was in it uh, completely locked me out. So at that time I wasn't able to connect through JTAG anymore to write any new firmware images and my uh, Trezor was not really working. I uh, could get it to work in bootloader mode but that's all. So I went back to the hardware to check if uh, all my soldering is right and I couldn't find anything wrong with the soldering. Then I checked the uh, schematic again to see if I uh, missed something or if I got some values wrong. And yes, you could say I left uh, this part out, but that's the uh, ESD protection for the USB, so it shouldn't stop it from working. And uh, we also know that the USB connection definitely works under bootloader mode, so I don't think that's uh, our problem. I also didn't use a fuse and uh, this protection diode but it should work without those just fine because I just uh, bridged that section so power is getting to the board just fine. And while doing this I also found this uh, image in their open source files among the schematic and other things. It is a, a picture with their assembled board that they uh, keep next to the source files. And then I noticed uh, something different. The picture showed the board with the, these resistors not populated but uh, there is no mention of that on the schematic. So I installed those resistors on my board as expected. So this could be our problem. Uh, it could be worth trying to remove those. And it was just a quick 10 seconds on the bench with the hot air gun. I got those resistors removed. I connected my board to my computer and I couldn't believe it, the board was now detected and Windows was installing the correct drivers. After Windows uh, finished installing the drivers, I went to the uh, Trezor Wallet website and sure enough it detected my device and uh, prompted me to upgrade the firmware. I said yes, it did that successfully. So I think uh, they should have somehow mentioned that those parts should not be populated but you know it's free software it's open source so i can't really complain about that like i mentioned in the uh, beginning of the video they also offer the source files for the enclosures so i tried to uh, 3d print the uh, enclosure and uh, this is what i got unfortunately the front panel is uh, not thick enough uh, you can see through the wall I think their design is optimized for injection molding so maybe my attempt is not that good or maybe it's because I'm using white PLA but uh, uh, I should be able to modify the STL files and increase the thickness of the enclosure 
at least the front panel uh, thickness and that should uh, fix the problem but just as a general thought here it's really nice that they provide you with everything you need uh, everything is open source so see this was my attempt so let's see if we can fit the uh, trezor inside the enclosure so yeah i guess it uh, it fits in there just nice even though i didn't have the uh, correct micro usb um, jack i used another one that i had in my uh, box of connectors but it seems like it uh, it fits just nice inside there yeah like the the buttons are not great but i can feel them it does uh, touch the push buttons inside so it's pretty much uh, built all the way to the enclosure and that's something really great uh, i really like how it looks even though like i mentioned this uh, uh, front panel is like see-through but i don't mind that at all I could use my device just like this without any issues. Right now I'm glad I was able to get it working and I'm feeling pretty good because it's a success. I built my own Trezor wallet complete with an enclosure. A new Trezor would cost you about uh, $120, $130 and that is definitely something to consider if you plan to store any larger value of uh, cryptocurrency. But for me, it was a fun project to try and uh, I hope it will inspire other people to build their own as well. I will place some links in the description to where you can get the original Trezor because uh, it is very important. You must only get these kind of hardware wallets from uh, the authorized sellers because uh, there, there could be modified hardware or software inside them and that will allow an attacker to steal your cryptocurrency so please only buy these from the authorized uh, sellers I've also created uh, some wallets for accepting uh, crypto donations uh, for the Vollog channel which will be linked in the description below so if you'd like to send something every Satoshi is appreciated I hope you enjoyed watching me build this project Maybe it will inspire you to do the same and uh, maybe you won't do the same mistake as I did with uh, those two resistors. So maybe I could save you the, tr the trouble of uh, going through all of that uh, debug work. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.